don't date our selected men. So here's why. In order for you to understand why you shouldn't be dating our selected men, you need to understand what RK selection is. Now I'm going to cut in an image here that explains it visually uh, fairly quickly. However, if you want to know more information, you're going to have to look at the links that are underneath this video. So basically, R and K selection talks about two different and very opposed reproductive strategies. And this is extremely important to understand if you're looking to date and get married because marriage uh, is all about reproduction. It's about the creation of a future generation of children. And in order to have a happy marriage, a successful marriage, and to uh, successfully produce children that are going to be raised well, we have to have someone uh, or marry someone that has a compatible reproductive strategy to our own. Now, essentially our reproductive strategy is about quantity over quality and K is the other way. It's about quality over quantity. But there are a lot of sub-factors within that and that all shakes out to be two very different ways of seeing the world as well as uh, different ways of dating and marriage and reproduction. Let's talk mostly though just about our selected men today and why you shouldn't date them. So the main reason is is because they share certain negative characteristics. Now of course not all our selected men are the same. Not all our selected people are the same. There is a range of behavior and a person might have some our selected uh, traits and they also might have some case selected traits and they'll fall somewhere in the in the middle. Um, people tend to cluster on one side or the other, uh, but they might belong to, for example, a group that uh, is fairly R-selected, except maybe it promotes in-group preference, but otherwise it's R-selected. Uh, so the, you will find sometimes these strange mixes. But even within our selection you have a dominance hierarchy. So you have alpha R-selected uh, people, males, and you have beta R-selected males. And I wrote an article about that and that will also be in the links below. Let's talk about what some of the negatives are. And this is um, doesn't matter if they're an alpha R or if they're a beta R. Uh, these are some, some of the most important negatives. So first of all is dishonesty. And it's not just dishonesty with you, it's dishonesty with themselves as well. Most of the R selected uh, men that I have spoken with, and in the last few months I've spoken with probably more R selected men than in my entire life uh, because of giving advice out. Most of these men don't know that they are R selected because they lie to themselves about what it means to be R selected. They, uh, they lie to themselves about their own behavior, so they minimize their our selected behavior because it's not seen as as being virtuous and if you say to them that you are our selected they will take it as an insult uh, this is because they they really haven't uh, gained the level of self-knowledge necessary to understand where they're fitting in the uh, sexual reproductive strategies um, just the same way that most men don't understand where they fit in a dominance hierarchy uh, they may instinctively know it but they couldn't describe it to you because they really haven't put much thought into it. Now this dishonesty, it goes on to every aspect of their life. So they're incapable of making a lot of self-improvement generally because they can't be honest with themselves about where they need to improve. Um, they will also, of course, lie to you. So this will well um, uh, integrates with the next big problem and that is disloyalty. So I'm going to talk about lying to you and disloyalty together um, because it makes a lot of sense. So they will lie to you about their promiscuity. Uh, our selected men will tell you they slept with far less, or far, far more if they're trying to brag to another man and far less if they're trying to get a case selected woman. Um, they will uh, tell you that they can be honest and monogamous but it's not really possible for them. I don't believe that it is possible for our selected men to be monogamous in the face of, um, how should I say, in the face of uh, potential 
to cheat. So of course you, you can have some monogamous R selected men that are of such low status that they simply can't cheat. No one would be interested in them. Um, but that's not really a virtue. Uh, that's The virtue is when you could do wrong and you choose to do right. That's where the virtue comes from. So this disloyalty, it's not just a lack of in-group preference. You know, the lack of in-group preference can also be described as disloyalty. There's a synonymous there because you have a natural, um, you should have a natural loyalty to your in-group and if you don't, you're disloyal. But the dishonesty and disloyalty are together. When you marry, you take a sacred vow uh, to be loyal and uh, monogamous to just one person and if either breaks out, the man or the woman, and we'll discuss our selected women another time, but if either one breaks that uh, bond, they're not only being dishonest, they're also being disloyal. So this is why I talk about the two things together. So both the dishonesty and the disloyalty come from a lack of empathy. When you don't really view other human beings uh, as having emotions and feelings and you can't understand how they feel and you kind of see them as interchangeable cogs in uh, a very mechanistic world, you will tend then to have very low empathy and that's very closely uh, associated with ours. I mean, if you're, if you're a rabbit, you can't have empathy for other rabbits. Another rabbit gets eaten, there's nothing you can do about it, so why do you care? And a lot of times, um, our selected people, they tend to be very uh, incapable of helping each other because they have so much of their own trauma and burdens. So, of course, this ends up leading to lack of empathy. You don't want to uh, date or marry someone with a lack of empathy. Um, they're not going to be a good partner, they're not going to understand your needs and wants, and they're not going to be a good father. It's very, very important to avoid lack of empathy. In fact, that's... Um, uh, aside, I, I think that's really the worst characteristic of our selection because it leads to many of the other our selected traits uh, such as the dishonesty and disloyalty. They also have a problem in general with emotional regulation. So that means they're, they're prone to aggression, uh, anger and violence. Now I have no problem at all with male aggression. I'm an aggressive man. Um, I have no problem with anger and I have no problem with violence. Uh, there are places where violence is necessary. There are times when even the best case selected man needs to be violent in order to protect himself, his tribe and his family. Uh, nothing wrong with that whatsoever. The problem is is when it's unregulated. You know, so the time for violence isn't when you're having an argument with your, your spouse or your kids. That's not the time for violence uh, under any circumstances. Um, this, this lack of regulation uh, comes from previous trauma and the fact that very often they weren't taught how to regulate their emotions. In general, that's the job of a father. You, you teach your children, especially your sons, how to regulate their emotions, how to control their, their healthy male aggression. And a lot of our selected men, they either didn't have a father physically present, so they, they just wasn't there or the father was emotionally not present. Or even worse, he himself could not regulate his emotions and actually taught them a bad way to regulate their emotions. So it was even worse than getting no information, it's getting wrong information. Now, the next issue is addiction issues, and this is not 100% um, every R selected man has this, but a lot of R selected men are dealing with severe childhood trauma, and they do that uh, through self-medication and that leads to addiction. So this could be so-called sex addiction. I'm I'm not particularly, I, I don't really believe in addiction itself. It's basically you've just decided to not have exercise any control over yourself. Um, but there are some some patterns that we term as addiction so I will use that word. Um, you know alcohol, sex addiction, uh, drug addiction, um, addiction to Sometimes the addiction can actually make them very successful. So they could have, say, an addi addiction to exercise, uh, which helps them to be at the top of their sport. You know, they just, that's all they want to do. They have an addiction to work, and they become really, really good at their job. And that can be, ha have some positive effects in their life, but again, it's that lack of control, lack of regulation that makes it an addiction, and not just a, a good trait of hard working. This is another, another issue. Some people think that our selected people aren't hard workers and that's not 
has nothing to do with R and K selection. Um, it does tend to be that the best workers are often K selected, but it has more to do with the fact that they can regulate themselves better, so they become very efficient in the long term, whereas R selected might work like crazy and then burn out. So, what do all these negative traits lead to uh, from your perspective as a woman? Well, they lead to a lack of security, a lack of stability, and that's going to affect your life and the life of your children. Uh, if you raise children in a unstable, insecure environment, you're going to raise our selected children. It doesn't matter if you as the mother are case selected or not. And basically, just by saying it lacks security and stability, uh, we should be turning off all the case selected women. Should they kill my new car? Uh, my son wants to show the camera his cars. <laughs> so this is a very important question. How do you identify an R-selected man? Okay, It's good to know to stay away from them, but if you can't identify them, then how is that going to help you? So the way that you... So the question now is, how do you identify an R-selected man? So first you're going to start off by... And you need to be able to identify an R-selected man quite rapidly. Um, be so that you can avoid them and the first thing you're going to look for is a man who is surrounded by other R selected people so if his uh, male and female friends are R selected and they're not going to be trying to pretend to be something they're not when they're around you um, because they're just not interested in that uh, they don't care about you in particular and so you'll notice sometimes that they're more their true self than the person that might like you. So someone likes someone, that they tend to uh, play up their best attributes. So if you look who they're surrounded by, it tells you a lot about them. So if all the men and women around a man are R selected, or the vast majority are, um, in fact, even if only a few are, the man is probably very R selected as well. So another um, really quick indicator that a man is R selected is if he believes that all women are R selected. So if the only kind of women he knows or he somehow believes that all women are R selected, um, he's become biased because that's the only kind of woman that will pay him attention or that is around him or that he has experience with. If a man only has experience with R selected women, doesn't even, you know, he, often they'll call K selected women unicorns because the case selected women have been so skilled at completely avoiding these men that the men actually believe they don't exist. You know, it's be, be kind of like being surrounded by Bigfoot and uh, you know, you've never seen Bigfoot because the, he's so good at staying away from you. And that's basically what it is. Uh, case selected women avoid our selected men like the plague. Um, so if he thinks that all women are our selected degenerate sluts unworthy of marriage, you can pretty much know he's a very R selected man. And a lot of these men, they think they're K selected um, because they see these negative traits in women that are R selected and then they think, oh, I don't have those traits, therefore I'm K selected. And again, like I mentioned before, they're just lying to themselves. So number three is uh, if he lives like a degenerate. So is he, you know, chronically on welfare or unemployed? Is he got addiction issues? Is he a man slut? Um, does he support and approve degeneracy, even if he's not particularly engaged in it himself, perhaps due to such a low sexual market value that no one wants to sleep with him. Uh, but if he's supporting it, he's our selected. And also, as number four, our selected men don't take personal responsibility for their lives and their decisions. Uh, so they're always looking to blame someone else for their failures, you know, it's the fault of the state. A lot of anarchists actually are very R-selected and a lot of libertarians are very R-selected. And you can tell which ones are R and K by how much, per instead of complaining about, say, government or authority or the courts or family courts or women or whatever has caused their problems or propaganda or uh, the Jews or whatever it is they want to blame, um, it's, it's not a problem to recognize that there are some issues with all of those things I just mentioned. Um, the problem is is when you blame that for every the, for the situation you uh, you are currently in and for everything in your life, okay? Because frankly, you know, life is 20% what happens to you and 80% how you deal with it. 
So you can, you can choose which direction you want to go in. You can choose who you want to be around and you can choose how much you're going to allow all these things to affect you. So an R selected man doesn't take personal responsibility for his life and his decisions. The last one, there are more, um, but the, we're only going to discuss five. The last one is, is that your case selected friends and family don't like them. So if you have some case selected brothers or cousins or your father or uh, some good case selected men around you, uh, especially mature case selected men, if they don't like the guy, if they get creeped out by him, if they uh, look at him like some sort of a sexual predator, uh, it's good to avoid that type of a man. So just don't be around that kind of a man. Listen to your case selected, especially older, wiser friends and family. Uh, they will protect you from getting involved with a bad man. So you might think now, and, and I've said this quite a number of times, that uh, there's no way that a case selected woman is going to get involved with an R selected man. That's not 100% true. There are times when case-selected women uh, end up marrying our selected men and it almost always leads to divorce. And often a lot of suffering on the part of the case-selected woman. So how does an our selected man get to marry a case-selected woman? How does that happen? How does he get by all of her uh, safeguards? Well, um, R and K selection are not a list of this one is all vices and this one is all virtues. There are weaknesses in case selection as well. Uh, one of those weaknesses is high levels of empathy and the other is this in-group preference. So if a man can pretend to be part of the in-group of a case-selected woman, while at the same time triggering the case-selected woman's maternal instincts by um, basically acting like a wounded animal, being a, a bit of a baby, um, he might short-circuit her brain and get her to marry him against the objections of her friends and her family and her natural instincts. This is a big problem to work out uh, exactly how this happens. Um, like I said, listen to your friends and family. They are going to help you a lot, especially if you're case selected and they are also case selected. If you don't have case selected friends, go make some first, then date. Don't try to date all on your own. It's, it's dangerous for you. So later I'm going to make another video. Um, about how to figure out where you can, how to identify and find case selected men, but I think that needs to be in a separate video. Uh, so for now, just remember, don't date our selected men, stay away from them, and go to smv4k.com for more information and to learn how you can put together a strategy that will ensure you have, date the right person for you and end up in a happy marriage with children. Thank you and have a good day.